Thank you for joining us for this episode of Recipe Share, a program on AADL TV, where we take a few minutes to talk about recipes in a featured category. Today's category is toddler friendly. I'm Elizabeth, and as usual, I'm joined with, by Katie and Beth. And this week we have a special guest, Shoshana. Uh, so Beth, will you tell us about your toddler friendly recipe? Okay, yes, I will tell you. So I started by asking my daughter who's um, has a what is known in, I guess as a taby. She's not quite a toddler. <laughs> She's a baby toddler. But um, anyway, when and when we talked about it a, what months ago, it was like, well, you know, toddlers, they like to have choices and it's good to give them some, you know, like different kinds of textures and things like that. So I was going with that idea and I simply just put together a, a pasta bar of sorts. Um, I made some uh, and I, here's a picture, it's not real exciting, but um, I made uh, turkey meatballs. And I also, I bought some uh, uh, basil pesto, some regular pesto. And then I realized I could make, and I did make uh, just a, a mixed green one, you know, again, with those power greens that I sometimes get. And uh, I made a little pesto out of that. So, um, and I made spaghetti on, and we had tortellini. So I used that too for choices. And um, I also made the marinara sauce with out of just some canned tomatoes, olive oil, garlic. You know, I have always tended to use a jar of marinara and then I add other things to it. And, you know, I just double checked the, the amount of sodium in the, that stuff is, off the charts. And with my daughter and her kiddos, she's trying because she's had another one now, but um, uh, she really likes to minimize the amount of salt in, in the food she gives her kids. So, uh, so by making it from scratch, I mean, and like, it's so, it's just easy. I don't know why I even ever bought the other stuff, but um, anyway, so now this, I have to say, as I was preparing it and all the choices and, you know, this is really, this is a grandmother kind of thing to do. If I, my kids at that age, there's no way I would have done that. I just wouldn't <laughs> know. So I just need to clarify that, that young, uh, you know, families out there don't feel like, uh, you need to get in that. And also like choices, you're like, no, I don't want to give them choices. But um, but anyway, that was the premise behind it. And uh, that's what we did. Well, it doesn't just sound like a grandma thing. It sounds like a Bammy thing because it's all like very much a beautiful board that you set up. And I can just picture you giving that to her and her just loving all the different choices. So that sounds really good. Yeah, yeah. And I so yeah, and there is this a picture of Olivia with um, having not eaten it yet. The other one is kind of messy. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, so want to share that. And also, like, I don't think I'll ever buy bottled uh, marinara again. So anyway, how about you, Shoshana? What did you make for your toddler? Um, so it's interesting because while I always support choices, I think most of what I interpret as toddler friendly in a family is ain't nobody got time for that as a definition of toddler friendly food. So um, what I, my recipe is sort of an evolution. Um, it started, it's first of all, waffles, it's waffles. Um, but I wanted to be able to send something to daycare because she goes to daycare um, that was fast that I could like have pre-packed and things like that. And so, um, but I also didn't want, like people talk about having frozen waffles. They're getting more and more expensive, especially since processed food is really expensive right now. Um, and so this recipe is really easy. Um, in its simple form, it is one banana, two eggs, 
a half a cup of oatmeal, just the oats, blend it, make waffles. Um, but who has time to do that on a regular basis? So I up it. <laughs> so it is six bananas, a dozen eggs and two cups of oats. Um, and I have to, uh, blend it in two batches because it doesn't fit in the Cuisinart that otherwise, but, um, blend it up. Um, partially it fluffs the eggs. It makes the bananas be batter. Um, I've actually heard you can do this with just bananas and eggs, but I add the oats. Um, and then I actually throw in, it's so funny. Cause I was like, what are the actual quantities? I'm like a handful. I think when I do the full like dozen egg, it's about like a cup and a half of blueberries. Um, if I let the batter sit for an hour or so, um, so if I like blend it before breakfast, let it sit and then like make them during lunch kind of thing, um, working from home has those perks. Um, then the batter, like the oats soak up some of the juice and things from the bananas. So that's a good thing. Um, definitely throw in the blueberries after it's all blended because then mm -hmm. they're still in there. Otherwise you will probably get purple waffles. Um, but then the other thing I discovered is in the also scheming of ain't nobody got time for that. Um, waffle irons, you know how like the first waffle is a lie. Like the, the waffle iron is not hot enough. Um, so really you need to like let it heat twice. And after having to like chip the, the waffles out, which is just very frustrating. Um, and I didn't have time to make more. I just greased a Pyrex stack dish, threw it all in there and baked it. And so now it's breakfast cake. Um, which is way faster than making waffles. So I take the batter, I make it the same way. I grease a pan um, and then bake it at like 350, 375 for 45 minutes to an hour, um, which is a lot longer than any cake recipe. But I think because the oats and the amount of eggs, it takes a long time to absorb. Um, and I just keep an eye on it. And then I slice it into pieces and I freeze it and I grab a couple pieces out and send them to daycare. And so that is my super easy, no sugar, but it still has the sweetness. She's getting eggs. She's getting bananas. She's getting oats. She's getting blueberries. It's, it's a well-rounded breakfast. I wish, I wish I ate so well. So that is my toddler friendly family survival recipe. <laughs> that is so interesting and cool. And I was at the end, you said something that, so when you like, what does it taste like to you as an adult? Is it, does it taste good or not really? I'm just curious. Is it like, would you like, do you eat it? <laughs> no, I totally get it. Um, yes. If I will say that I personally prefer it in waffle form, naturally wouldn't everyone prefer everything in waffle form. Um, frankly, I have a theory you can put anything in a waffle iron. Um, but it tastes fine. I mean, I think that it, it doesn't have all those extra sweeteners that we're so used to in baking. And so you have to kind of adjust to that. But um, if you've ever like looked at the, the sugar content of a muffin and a cupcake, the muffin is sometimes higher. And so to take that out, um, I, it, it tastes just fine. A lot of people suggest like using frosting of plain uh, Greek yogurt, which to me, like plain yogurt needs something. And the fact that kids just gobble it up because it's frosting, I'm like, okay. Um, I think it tastes perfectly fine. And again, like I don't love having a lot of sugar in this part, particularly in the morning. So um, I will say the browner, the bananas, the better. There's no question on that. Um, up, up to a point, <laughs> to a key point. Um, but yeah, so I try like sometimes I have a dozen bananas or excuse me, six bananas that are like just the right amount of brightness, but like I mix and match and things like that. So yeah, it, I think it tastes great. Um, and it's not like a sugary muffin and it, it gets you what you need. I just wondered when, when you put it in a pan, is it like kind of crunchy? Um, so I did learn the hard way. You really have to grease the pan pretty hard on this one. Um, I tried to make muffins and that, I think if I had used the papers, it probably would have been fine, but, um, greasing it, there was just, it was hard to clear it all out. Um, because eggs stick differently, I think. And since it's a lot of egg, um, but I did, that's the thing I'm still kind of working on temperature wise because everything I've read says 350, but I find the middle is still a little too spongy. And so the other thing is like, I hate to say this, but like 
she's not going to complain if the cake is not moist enough. So mm -hmm. like, I'd rather over bake it a little bit, um, and make sure everything is appropriately sanitized. Um, but yeah, I just, I kind of look at it in the oven and see if it looks done and, you know, do a temperature check and that kind of thing. So, so Katie, what did you have in mind? All right. So I have a little slight disclaimer before I share my recipe. And that is that I have not cared for a toddler in about 20 years. And back then was very sporadic care. And when I was feeding them, I did not care about cooking back then. So it was probably box mac and cheese and frozen chicken fingers. That said, <laughs> I did find a recipe that I wanted to share. It's from this book. The Defined Dish, Healthy and Wholesome Weeknight Recipes by Alex mm -hmm. Snodgrass. I've actually got quite a few bookmarks in this one. So there's a couple of recipes that I'd like to try, but this one actually did try. It is uh, cheeseburger meatballs. And you can see by the accompanying photo that I <laughs> there's a little toddler person here who seems to be enjoying them. So I thought that was a good indicator. Also, Beth, I appreciate that you also used meatballs to feed your toddler. So even more backing for me behind this is an appropriate recipe. Um, also, uh, cheeseburger or meatballs in general, I think are a pretty good thing for toddlers to eat because they can be held in your little hands and packed also if, you know, they need to go to a lunch place or whatever. <laughs> anyway, uh, these meatballs are, uh, have 90% lean ground beef, shredded mild cheddar cheese, almond flour, an egg, two tablespoons of dill relish, a tablespoon of ketchup, and then just a little bit of Dijon mustard, salt, pepper, garlic powder, and onion powder. And um, you just mix them all together in a, all your ingredients in a bowl and you know, you're supposed to use your hands. So I feel like that could be a place, like if your toddler was so inclined that they might actually be able to help with making the recipe. And then also like if the dexterity is there, they could form them into the little meatballs. You just form them about like a generous tablespoon amount, but you know, roughly <laughs> they're meatballs. It just don't, does not have to be perfect. You put them on your baking sheet for 15 minutes at 400 degrees and they're done. So this is something that um, is pretty easy and fast, like especially once you get all your ingredients gathered. Um, and so I, I actually made these and I served them for a small Super Bowl gathering that I had recently. And um, you can see the picture that I took. I served them with a little bit of Big Mac sauce. So there's a bunch of recipes online for how to replicate the Big Mac sauce. I picked one that I thought sounded good. I don't remember where I got it from, but I will include it in my recipe. Uh, but when I served these to my adult friends, they kind of went crazy over them. There's something about biting into a meatball and having a pickle flavor happen that is unexpected and quite delightful, especially if you like pickles. And I think most kids like pickles too. So um, this was just something that was really wonderful and easy. And this is definitely going in my party arsenal from now on. I will definitely make it again, but I think it would be good for kids too. I think one of my like key, is this a toddler food is, can I make a bunch of it ahead of time? And it's like meatballs, even if you don't eat meat, like if you make meatless ones, like mm -hmm. it is a small portion of food that you can grab portions out of a frozen bag or what have you. And yeah, that's great. And yes, I can confirm that she'll inhale pickles. So yeah, I, I like that it adds uh, dill relish because I, I do not like sweet relish at all. So uh, yeah, that sounds really yummy. It sounds fun too. Like that's kind of just a fun recipe to put together. I don't know. I just, it's yeah, like hamburger. Is this, what are they called? Hamburger, what were they called? Hamburger meatballs? Cheeseburger meatballs because you got your better <laughs> cheese yeah, too. fun. Yeah. It was very fun and I doubled it. So easily doubled and freezable as well. So yes, meatballs are wonderful. Elizabeth, tell us what you chose for your toddler friendly recipe. Sure. So I had a lot of trouble with this because similar to Katie, I don't, I, I have two beautiful nieces who are toddlers, but they live far away. So I'm not involved in their 
feeding. Um, and you know, I, yeah, I haven't fed a toddler in so long. Uh, I don't even know. Anyway. Um, but I was thinking, I was a little bit inspired by one of our colleagues who did a series for ADL TV called one for us, one for him, um, which is where she would cook for her family and modify the recipe if needed slightly to feed, um, their toddler slash he was kind of a baby at the time. But, um, so I kind of thought about that concept of like, how could you make a meal that would also work for um, a, a toddler? And so what I made with the recipe comes from Minimalist Baker. Um, it's called Mediterranean Baked Sweet Potatoes. And um, basically you cut some sweet potatoes in half, drizzle with a little olive oil and salt, um, and you bake them. And on the same baking sheet, um, you roast some drained chickpeas. Um, and you're supposed to add some spices, but I thought with a toddler, you could maybe spice half of them and not spice the other half, depending on what the baby would want. Um, and then you take them out and for adults, you can top it with um, this kind of basically really simple um, tomato, parsley, lemon juice, olive oil um, salad. And then you take some tahini, lemon juice, garlic, and um, salt, pepper, and a little bit of water, and you're supposed to drizzle that on. It was very good. I have a photo of the finished bowl here. My husband and I enjoyed it. But for toddlers, I was thinking, you know, they could have the sweet potato. You could mash it up a little bit. Um, they, you could, I don't, I was really worried about picking something that a baby could choke on. So I don't know if a toddler could like pick up sweet or pick up chickpeas and eat them, or if that'd be dangerous but you could easily mash them a little bit too um, and maybe add a little bit of olive oil or whatever would make them better and they were really good roasted um, so loved that um, and then depending on what the baby likes like Beth said the choices you know if if your baby likes tomatoes you could give them a little bit of the tomato the, like sliced tomatoes to eat with it um, who knows maybe the toddler likes tahini <laughs> I have no idea um, but you know, you could certainly give them some options to taste the different components of the recipe. And you know, even if they're a picky eater, it seems like most kids would eat like a nice uh, mashed potato and some flavorful chickpeas. Um, so I thought it would kind of work for a family and it was very, very easy. It took me, I mean, cutting the sweet potatoes in half and then they roasted for 25 minutes. Um, while I, while they were roasting, I was just putting the other stuff together and that was it. The whole thing took that amount of time. Um, there were leftovers. You could certainly make more to have additional sweet potatoes left for the next day to send with a baby somewhere or whatever. Um, and it was really good. So that was what I tried to come up with, uh, as an inexperienced toddler, toddler feeder. Um, but I think it, I think it would work. So the there's a trick because I'm the same way like I, she can chew through anything but I'm still like nervous about beans and things and part of the trick is just making sure it's cut slightly so it can mush easier um mm. and like chickpeas if you just put them between two plates or cutting boards and run a knife between them it'll slice them in half um so that is fast on on that Ooh. perfect it that that kind of reminds me of like a deconstructed hummus the way you had it. it sounds really yummy two other things one is our little toddler baby girl she's like she was practically raised on hummus um so yeah she's she loves she, she'll eat um kind of spicier things um the other thing i didn't mention when when with my dish was i had a couple of different cheeses and one was that there was these little tiny um, mozzarella pearls. They're so cute that I just had to get them. Anyway, sorry, I didn't mention that earlier, but um, yeah. I, I, and I will say the sheet pan recipe, like that's been saving me on multiple occasions because again, I can cut up a bunch of stuff, throw it in, roast it. Um, and I don't even put the sauce on just because I don't. Um, but what's great is when I have leftovers, I can actually use them as pizza toppings too. So I've, I've realized like if I can get recipes, I can line up and that's a lineup that I seem to have been going with. So yes, Good idea. <clears throat> Good call. Cause basically I've all been doing 
zucchini. So <laughs> garbanzo beans and uh, and sweet potatoes, I should venture more into. Yeah, and the the garbanzo beans roasted really well. Like you didn't have to put them in later. It was just all at once, which I loved. It was just all on the, on the, and you know, for the adults, they called for a little bit of cumin and cinnamon and stuff, which, you know, I mean, I think would be fine for a toddler if they're into that, but also you could leave it out if they weren't, so. All right. Well, if no one else has anything to add, I will say thank you uh, to our audience for watching Recipe Share. Be sure to click the link below to look at the event page on aadl.org to find the recipes we talked about and feel free to share your own in the comments. Uh, join us next time on Recipe Share when we'll be talking about collaborative cooking. We're looking forward to seeing what you've been making. So thank you for sharing. Share, recipe share, share a little recipe with recipe share.